Let's talk to Rosie Duffield, who's a Labour MP and chair of the Women's and Parliamentary Bruins Parliamentary Labour Party, and joins us now. Good morning to you, Rosie. Hi, Junior. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, one of the really big concerns, not just for women, but for everybody, I think, at the moment, is what's happening in Afghanistan, is particularly to women and girls. Uh, we're told by the Taliban that well, their, their rights are going to be protected within the bounds of Sharia law. Bit of a question mark there about what that really means in terms of women's rights. Girls going to school, women attending university, uh, being able to work and choose their jobs as opposed to just those jobs that are acceptable to the Taliban. Um, and also, of course, the even more terrible prospect of them being wearing burqas, being only allowed out of their homes with a male unless a male companion uh, is with them. And to girls as young as 10 or 12 being it's called married off, but basically taken away to be raped by men uh, in what they are calling uh, a marriage. Um, how concerned are you that actually the moment American and British forces leave, that, that all hell is going to break loose and women and girls are going to be the ones who suffer the most? Yeah, I agree with all that you've just said. I mean, that is extremely concerning. And we know that probably the things that we're hearing from the Taliban and their nice shiny press conferences are a complete load of spin. And we will see the proof when, as you said, everyone leaves, the attention is slightly less on them. But we need to keep those networks open with women that are there so that we we can shine the spotlight, like David David said, on, on exactly what's happening. Indeed. So that Everyone around the world knows what's going on. And it just reminds me, just watching this, it's a bit like watching The Handmaid's Tale, you know, or reading that book over again, but in slow motion, we can kind of see it happening. We know it's going to happen. And, you know, most of us in Parliament, I have to admit, feel quite powerless at the moment. I, I completely agree with you in terms of Handmaid's Tale, which was a, a book and a TV series which uh, haunted me. I, I remember, you know, I'd watch it and sort of need a few hours to sort of get my heart rate back to normal because it was so scary. Yeah. And having watched it happen with the Taliban uh, or previously, knowing that this, this was just being played out in real life. Um, us keeping the spotlight on is all very well. And us knowing and documenting and women speaking out about it is all very well. But if we're not going to do anything about it, and if the women in Afghanistan, although we've seen some protests on the streets, and goodness me, these women are incredibly brave, yeah. um, then, then that's not going to do any good, is it? No, and I, I feel that frustration all the time. I'm, I'm waking up in the middle of the night thinking, what can we actually do? How do we physically get someone out of there even? You know, it, it, it is haunting us in Parliament at the moment, particularly women. But, you know, we saw a lot of cross-party con condemnation of this yesterday, and it isn't a political issue in terms of what colour your political party is at all. Yeah. We're all just human beings. And I think that the shining of the spotlight is more than it sounds like because if we are shining that light on exactly what is happening then countries that are trading with this regime are also hopefully having to justify to their voters their electorate their country you know what they're doing and why they're doing but, it and but, how they're sanctioning but who's, tra who's trading? Not let's talk about you know, Pakistan. <laughs> I mean, let's not pretend that women have uh, okay. a, a decent uh, quality of life. Most women in Pakistan, um, Iran. I mean, goodness me, you know, women who protest the hijab, let uh, even the burqa, uh, are, are, are uh, uh, put, you know, put in prison. Um, uh, Russia couldn't give two hoots about women's rights. I mean, Vladimir Putin th thinks that a man should have a right to beat his wife, uh, you know, in, in marriage. And, and China, I mean, we know China has no concern whatsoever for human rights. Um, you know, what hope is there? If, if, I mean, is there an argument that we should stay very much involved as we can and keep trade, not sanction, yeah. and to, well, to, to keep that going, rather than basically leaving Afghanistan to these other countries, none of which are going to be a good influence? I don't feel qualified to know the exact answer. I think we're going to have to see exactly what plays out in the next few months and years. But but just highlighting what those countries are doing, what they're sanctioning, I think, you know, at least they have to then justify what they're doing. Okay, it's it sounds Do really pathetic. It sounds like nothing. Care. So maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I mean you're you the countries you've listed probably don't care at all. But but then do we impose trade sanctions on them? I mean so much of what we buy comes from China. Why are we if we're if we're so called sovereign now, why are we so sort of interacting with these countries? Perhaps we need to take a much firmer line. Right. You know, obviously I don't speak for Emily Thornbury or any of our trade uh, front bench, but perhaps that is the kind of route that we need to look down. Why well, if we're not going to punish China for what they're doing to the Uyghur people or for you know, inflicting this pandemic well, on we us. We should be. Well, exactly, <laughs> but, it, but, but we're not because people are addicted to cheap goods. Yeah, but that's something we can change. We can do something about. Surely, it's up to us politicians to suggest that and to show the way. You know, I don't have the answers, but I think we've got to do something. I, I, I so agree with you in the sense that you know we we don't have the answer. What what is the solution to this? The the solution one one could argue has been 
the US playing a, a role as the world's policeman, uh, Britain by its side, other countries, countries stepping yeah. in and doing the right thing and saying that there Absolutely. are some fundamental human rights that exist for everybody, regardless of the regime you yeah. live under, and we will go in and protect those. Now, that involves us having a very interventionist foreign policy. It involves British lives mm -hmm. being lost. It involves huge amounts of taxpayers' money being spent uh, on these uh, foreign wars abroad. It, it would be us going into countries around the world, you know, rather than just picking and choosing one country. Yeah. The reality is the, the the British people don't have the fight for that. The British government doesn't have the fight for that. The Americans certainly don't. It's not going to happen. There's got to be a fine line. I mean, OK, we don't want to send more soldiers to their death. That would be horrendous. But when you look at the families and what they were saying yesterday and, and all of this week, you know, did my son, daughter, you know, husband, wife lose their life or their limbs for nothing? They expect us to still make sure that those people that they cared about and work with the safe. There's got to be a fine line. We've got to try and find out how we can do that. It hasn't emerged yet, but, you know, we have to keep fighting. We have to keep those networks open with those women. We have to keep supporting the kind of NGOs that are even smuggling in phones and SIM cards so those women can talk to us. Any way we can, we have to help. And it does sound feeble and pathetic, I agree. The US have really let us down. They are mighty and they have to speak up more. Rosie Duffield, uh, Labour MP and Chair of the uh, Women's Parliamentary Party, really appreciate you joining us. Again, I feel a lot of your despair there as well.